next chapter, you will be learning how to find the derivatives of the functions. In order to find the derivative, the function has to be continuous, so we need to make sure that we know exactly what continuous means. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to determine if a function is continuous using the conditions for continuity. All right, let's go ahead and start out with just looking at the definition of continuity. Continuity at a point for a function f to be continuous at c, so some x value of c, the graph is unbroken at c and there are no holes, jumps, or gaps. If a function is continuous on an interval, um, the, it is continuous at each point in the interval. An informal check for continuity that we'll usually use, we just can't really use formally, if you don't have to pick up your pencil to move from one side of the interval to another, then the function is continuous. So let's just take a look at this example right here. Um, let's say I've got this nice little graph going on here. It looks like this. All right. If I started at the left side of my graph, and I'm just going to try to trace my pencil across, notice I've got to jump over the hole to get to the other side of the graph. So since I had to pick up my pencil, this is a discontinuous graph. All right. If I looked at my next example, how about if at that same x value I put an asymptote? did something like that. All right, so once again, start at the left. As I go to start tracing the graph, notice I've got to pick up my pencil to get over to the other side of the graph. So again, because I had to pick up my pencil, there was a whole jump or gap. This is also a discontinuous, continuous function. All right, let's look at one that's actually continuous. If I have a graph that looks like this, if I start at the left and just head towards the rest of the graph, notice I did not have to pick up my pencil at all. It was just a nice smooth transition from one side of the curve to the other. So this would actually be a continuous graph. So that's basically what we're looking for for something being discontinuous and continuous. Now we're going to actually, this is very informal, now we're going to use formal rules to actually explain why it is continuous or discontinuous. Three conditions must be met in order for a function to be continuous, right? The first condition is that f of c has to be defined. So if I was looking at a graph like this, and we've got something that's going on that looks like this. Let's say for me, I'm going to let my c value, you won't really get to pick your c value, but I'm picking it right now. Um, let's say my c value is 2. So I'm concerned, is the function continuous at x equals 2? So that's what I would like to decide. The first thing, I need to make sure that f of 2 is defined. And by that I just mean, is there a y value at x equals 2? So if I look at x equals 2, there's definitely on this graph, we'll just call it, it's got a y value of 1. So I would actually get to put f of 2 equals 1. At x equals 2, the y value is 1. It's defined. All right, the next condition is that the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. And we're going to stick with that same example. So this next thing, I need to figure out what is the limit as x approaches 2. Does it exist? So remember from our last discussion on limits, we're going to take our pen or pencil or finger or whatever from the left side of the graph and approach x equals 2. And as I'm doing that, I'm getting close to a y value of 1. And then as I do that same thing coming in from the right side, I'm, in, I'm getting closer to a y value of 1. And so I, my limit is actually equal to 1. So it does exist. It actually gave me the answer of 1. Right, condition three, the limit as x approaches c, so in our case, the limit as x approaches 2 of our function, we would like it to equal f of c. So we would like it to equal f of 2. Does it? Well, we just found the limit equaled 1. We already found that f of 2 equals 1. Those two do equal each other. So that's the third condition that would need to be met. And you can tell just by looking at it. If I started at the left and headed towards the right, I don't need to pick up my pen or pencil, so I do know that it is. This just confirms it mathematically. All right, so let's look at some pictures and, and try this. The biggest thing is, if you have those three conditions for continuity, if even one of them is not met, then the function is discontinuous. So let's look at this first example. I can tell that there's a trouble spot happening at x equals 3 because I see a hole there. So I can pretty much tell the function is discontinuous. I just need to figure out why is it discontinuous formally. So I'm going to do my first check. My first check would be that f of 3 is defined. So if I look at x equals 3, is there a point there? There definitely is. There is a y value of 2. So the point f of 3 is defined and it equals 2. So first check is fine. Okay, the second one is that the limit 
as x approaches 3 exists. So again, let's go ahead, let's start at the left side of our graph. As we're headed towards x equals 3, notice that I'm headed towards a y value of 4. Do the same thing with my right side. As I'm headed towards x equals 3, I'm headed towards a y value of 4. So since those are the same, we know that our limit is equal to 4. So actually those two work so far. So let's go down to the third condition for continuity. My third condition tells me that the limit is equal to the point. So we should find that the limit as x approaches 3 is equal to f of 3. Well, we found out the limit as x approaches 3 is 4, and f of 3 was equal to 2. Those do not equal each other. So this is a discontinuous graph, and it's discontinuous because it does not meet condition 3. All right, next example. I notice that my trouble spot is happening at x equals 2. And again, I can tell that this is a discontinuous graph. We just need to find the condition where it falls apart at. Okay, the first thing that we want to find is f of 2. Is f of 2 defined? So if I look at this graph at x equals 2, there is a point there, and it's happening at 1. So the y value there is 1. So first check is fine. Okay, the second one is does the limit as x approaches 2 exist? So let's take a look. That's supposed to be an arrow. There we go. Okay, so as I'm going in from the left side, I notice that I'm at a y value of 1. As I'm coming in from the right side, I notice that I have a y value of 3. Those do not match each other, so my limit does not exist. My conditions for continuity fall apart right there. So this is also a discontinuous graph, and that is formally y. All right, if we look at the third one, again, I can tell it's discontinuous because there's a hole and I'd have to pick up my pencil, but again, we're going to just discover it formally. The first one is that I'm going to, the x value in question would be x equals 4 because that's where I see a hole at. So we need to first of all figure out, is f of 4 defined? So if I look at x equals 4, I'm not seeing any point. I'm just seeing a big hole there. So f of 4 is not defined. So right at this spot right here, we can stop. We don't even need to try the other two. We've found out that this graph is discontinuous, and that is why. So hopefully, you should now be able to use the conditions for continuity to tell whether a graph is continuous or not.